At the time of this recording, Blancpain has just unveiled their third 70th anniversary, 50 Fathoms, a piece that's celebrating the 1953 launch of the original. And this one is based on an original mil-spec model. It's in bronze gold, which is a peculiar material choice. But the amazing thing is its proportions are one to one correct, even down to the, the length of the lugs. Now granted you're getting a strange case material, it's very expensive and it's being given to you on a NATO strap, but we know how these limited edition Blancpain launchers are. But in the wake of the Swatch collaboration, every second comment on this new launch has been the same. Nice swatch. And I think this is going to be the ongoing joke from here on out. A lot of you have asked for my opinions on this new launch and I've taken some time to really think about it because I feel like I'm in quite a unique position. The designer in me loves the creative process, loves the making, loves seeing what materializes, you know? But the watch enthusiast in me sees it very differently. You know, the whole reason why I've dedicated quite a portion of my life to pursuing mechanical watches, these amazing machines, and giving up a career in the consumable industry there's plenty of reasons, ethics, morals, you name it. So I thought I'd take some time to discuss their designs, what they did right, what they did wrong, the positives and the negatives, as well as the bittersweet aspect to these designs and the, the overarching irony of this collaboration and what it means, you know, beneath the surface. Can we agree that it's a strange time to be a watch enthusiast? Because like never before, there are so many diverse options of choice, and that's not going to change anytime soon. The great thing I think is that we have become far more tolerant as collectors. Maybe that could be seen as a bad thing that our standards are dropping, I don't know. We are more accepting of people's choices, are far more open and receptive to learn more about them, and to find out why people collect what they do. In large part, that is what has made a platform like this so brilliant. We can hear people's points of views, we can agree or disagree, we can have great debates on subjects. With so much choice and freedom to choose, there's also many great quality alternatives to choose from. And with the advancement of technology paired with traditional watchmaking, modern watches today are far more durable than ever before. And it's this freedom of choice that has spurred on the creation of more and more watches of varying levels of quality and, well, whatever these swatch collaborations are. It's not a surprise that we've seen these Blancpain swatches arrive, but maybe not so quickly. Bear in mind it has been a year since the unprecedented success of the Moon Swatch. It feels like it's been almost a decade, or is that just me who feels this way? And I think we were all expecting the Moon Swatch wave to be ridden far longer. In just over a year we have seen multiple new models, colorways, different handsets, but it's only been a year, and this repetition for a lot of us, it's become quite stale. And it's almost as if the products themselves are already tired. Maybe that's a bit of foreshadowing. That sudden burst of excitement was milked for all it was worth by every blog, journalist, and enthusiast, to a point where we became so tired of it very quickly. Bearing in mind that the majority of us probably weren't even keen on them in the first place. You know, it was interesting, it made for a cool talking point, but a plastic Speedmaster didn't register on everyone's must-have list. So with the arrival of the Blancpain equivalent, has the reception been as mad as with the Moon Swatch? Not really. Mainly for two reasons, I believe. The Speedmaster, it's one of the most recognizable watches in the world. It's iconic, and I think a large majority of the world know what it is. They know what Omega is as a brand. The second is that novelty of a cheaper alternative Swatch watch of this kind. It's not new anymore. The originality is gone. It's, it's been diluted. So the aim of using Blancpain in this instance was to, on one hand, appeal to the watch enthusiast, the more hardcore collector who wishes they could own a Blancpain but can't. And also to focus on appealing to the new timer, for them to learn more about this prestigious name, now being able to enjoy another very important design. I think we would all collectively own a Blancpain if we could. It's one of, if not the oldest, surviving Swiss watch manufacturer today. There's no real debate that in the 1950s, Blancpain was ahead of its competitors in so many respects, from the size of the watch and its presence on the wrist, to the Gasca Technology Incorporated, to collaborations with militaries. The 50 Fathoms was a first in many areas, and contrary to popular belief, the name 50 Fathoms has nothing to do with its depth rating. It was actually a marketing ploy. Borrowing from Shakespeare's The Tempest, that, that alliteration sounded very good, and that's why the name was chosen. 
So it had nothing to do with its death rating, but rather how great the name sounded. But the 1970s weren't kind to this brand, and as we know it, it was brought back to life with the help of Jean-Claude Beaver. He bought the company when it was literally just a name with nothing much to offer. He turned it around and at a very daunting time to do such a thing, introduced a series of grand complications, legitimately blew its competition away, including names like Patek Philippe. And years later, he sold the company for millions. So now under the Swatch Group, they produce a wide range of diverse options that we would love to get our hands on. But in the area of tool watches that they are well known for, this intersection of utility machines and horterology, it is difficult to justify paying those sorts of prices. Ask anybody who is watching this video what they would like, and they'll probably say the same thing. A watch around 40 millimeters in size, based on their insanely successful limited edition collections, looking into their back catalogs of some of the most original dive watch designs in the world, produce them at a reasonable price that we can pay for and not make them a limited edition. But this is never going to happen. So we get the selection of 50 Fathoms scuba pieces, five in total. I think it was a missed opportunity that they didn't call it the System 51 Fathoms. It rolls off the tongue nicer. But let's get it out of the way. I like these designs. Seeing them individually, I think they are a lot more coherent as individual watches compared to a majority of the moon swatches we received. There were some missed opportunities to not include more softer pastel colors into the mix, but I think this was probably done intentionally to separate them from the Moon Swatch collection and make them more individual. Of the five, the most congruent are the blue, the beige, and the gray. So the Atlantic, the Antarctic, and the Arctic, they actually look fantastic. It's interesting seeing how they're using the modern 50 Fathoms look in 42 millimeters, but also blending a mil-spec style model in with the orange. No radiations on the dial makes no sense. If you're not a Blancpain enthusiast, you wouldn't know what you're looking at, but it's a cool novelty. But also looking at the gray model, an early Torneck Ravel inspired design with a water ingress indicator on its dial. It's also great seeing this quite tongue-in-cheek use of 50 fathoms on the dial for its depth rating. Again, not true to the original, but it's fun. Having an open case back with all of these different sea creature motifs on the back, denoting what part of the ocean they're from. It has effective looking loom on the bezels, on the dials, on the hands. Uh, some great texturing, some fume effects. There is a nice balance of type on these dials. The choice of colors used, all correct. These have been designed, they have been scrutinized, and I will say this, they come across very, very attractive. There has been some great attention to detail in the most important places, especially when it comes to its presentation. Far better than the Moonswatch. And I think if you didn't know the materials that these watches were comprised of, if you were told that they were made of ceramic, and you didn't know their prices, you would probably think they were quite expensive. But for all that window dressing, for that great attention to detail, that one-to-one -one representation of a Blancpain 50 Fathoms, this watch is a consumable. Meaning in layman's terms that this is a product aimed at being used and then replaced. Now maybe you've been able to work out that I'm not a devoted fan of all of this, but I'm going to give the Moon Swatch props in this department. When it comes to the fact that you can replace its battery, that a quartz movement is going to last far longer the good thing is that a battery can always be replaced, but a System 51 caliber, it's not serviceable, and I don't even know if it can be regulated. If there is an issue with this watch under warranty, the entire watch will be disposed of and replaced. You're probably all saying the same thing. This is Swatch. This is how Swatch operates. Their watches are cheap, affordable, disposable. That's kind of the life cycle of these pieces. But with a collaboration like this, there's an issue. The reason why I left the consumable industry as an industrial designer. In the past, I designed Italian kitchenware, DeLonghi coffee machines, products for brawn. The underlying reason is that I hate obsolescence. That even while making a product, you're programmed at the very beginning, even in the process of coming up with a concept, that it's going to be made redundant in a handful of years. I hate that the work that you do is often superseded not even months later. That your designs don't have longevity, but more importantly, the products that you are creating, well, they are made without longevity in mind. When it comes to quality watches though, they will last for multiple generations. If taken care of, they will only need servicing well into a decade of use, maybe even more. Their designs, especially some of the best, they're timeless. Quite simply, the majority of quality made watches from brands that we know are not built to be disposed of and replaced. So here is the bittersweet part of the Swatch Blancpain collaboration. So their designs look great. I would say 
leagues ahead of the Moon Swatch in many respects when it comes to attention to detail, quality, I would put that in quotations in a lot of places, a greater emphasis looking at the most important aspects and trying to bring home how this represents a Blancpain in a Swatch package. But the irony, here we go. These watches are using recycled fishing nets for their NATO straps. That's fantastic. But Blancpain themselves, they've been involved in some of the biggest ocean cleanup initiatives in the watch industry for decades at this point. On top of that, the name Blancpain is one of the oldest and most prestigious in the Swiss industry. Cut it as thin as you like, whether six months from now, six years from now, this is still a watch made from disposable plastic with an irreplaceable movement that's inevitably going to be thrown away. And I can't stand by that. Especially considering that the biggest polluter of our oceans is plastic and that these pieces might one day unironically end up being there. There is such a clear conflict of interest with these pieces because on one hand they are fun, they are exciting, they do in a lot of ways bring a lot more exposure to Blancpain as a name and that's a good thing. This brand should be enjoyed and celebrated and worn by more people. But in order to do it, grouping watches like these together in an accessible luxury genre which is also oxymoronic. I just think there is a better way of doing this. Offer watches like these at affordable prices with longer lasting materials. My two cents would be to take that 400 bucks, put that amount aside for 10 to 12 months, and then get something really special. You know, buy a watch that's going to have everlasting memories that'll be with you for the rest of your life. And that delayed gratification will make such a better experience, such a more enjoyable and wholesome wearing experience with a watch that you truly want. Unfortunately, mainstream releases like these and the hype on top of it dictates where all the attention goes. But coming from someone who's been involved in the consumable industry, who has vowed to never go back to it, and who's spent a lot of his life now following mechanical watches and who consults on the side, there are better things to pursue. Do these watches, these swatch collaborations, do they have longevity? I think it's more of a trend. In a lot of ways, I can see the good that will come out of it, that the name Blancpain might receive a lot more eyes and a lot more attention. There are a lot of things at play here, and the final point I will leave with you is, taking a near 300-year-old name and putting it inside a plastic watch, well, that's something I'm still trying to wrap my head around.